Wow, what an honor this is, truly. And from the bottom of my Italian heart, grazie mille, Dean Miller, for this, for this recognition. You know, ever, ever since I stepped foot on this campus, I've loved everything about Dornsife. And for this love to be reciprocated like this by way of this invitation, an award could not be more special to me. I will treasure this moment as dearly as I've treasured my unforgettable years spent here. You know, it, it's actually hard to believe that almost 30 years ago, I was sitting right where you are, wearing my ill-fitting rented cap and gown and, and this pair of really tacky wrap-around Italian sunglasses. I, I actually got into a fight with my mother that morning because she wanted me to take the glasses off. Not only did she find it disrespectful, I'd wear them at a graduation ceremony, but also, and that kind of hurt me, she said that they were so wide on my face, they made me look like a dragonfly. <laughs> of course, her slight only caused me to dig heels, my heels in even further, and I made sure those glasses were glued to my face come hell or high water all damn day. The result, I don't have one single picture of my graduation without those awful shades. And for all of you wearing sunglasses right now, I'd suggest you take them off for at least one picture. Because you know what? She was right. They did make me look like a dragonfly. So lesson number one, listen to your mother. No matter how irritating, and I understand how they could be, her comments are, in the not so distant future, they will be proven right. You know, I remember that morning like it was yesterday, walking on stage to get my diploma and as it was handed to me, being overtaken with a sense of relief, but also anxiety. Relief for having graduated and anxiety for what the future might or might not hold. These were legitimate emotions, but in hindsight, the feeling that was missing was pride. The pride stemming from a well-deserved sense of achievement. No matter how much praise I received from family and friends, none of it really landed because in my mind, graduating was what I expected of myself. It was the normal thing to do. But you know what? There is nothing normal about graduating from college. And I wish I would have given myself a pat on the back because I deserved it. And today, you deserve it. Today, I want to celebrate you for what you have achieved. You've earned your college degree and you've done it despite an ongoing pandemic, an onslaught of atmospheric rivers battering the California coast, the toxic culture of social media, and last but not least, the heart-wrenching breakup of Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox. <laughs> but seriously, Though, the amount of focus and the amount of concentration you needed to block all this stuff out is truly mind-boggling. But you were motivated. You, deserve, you understood that in pursuing a higher education, you'd become the driver of your life rather than the passenger. How many people in the world can say that? How many people take that chance or let alone have that opportunity? Each and every single one of you has chosen the path of self-realization. Thanks to your diligence, perseverance, and commitment, you have started the journey towards fulfilling that very promise. From now on, whatever life throws at you will be on your terms. Yes, the road will be long. Yes, of course, it'll be hard. But the first step is already behind you. And for that, you deserve a round of applause. So there aren't 
that many lessons that I can teach you as you embark on this next chapter, you know, other than listening to your mother, of course. Life lessons aren't so much taught as they're earned through experience, each one a badge of honor. But there is one thing that I wish someone would have told me at this early stage of the game. Whatever you do, trust your instinct. Learn to listen to that inner voice of yours. That voice is what distinguishes you from everyone else. That voice is what will help you leave your unique imprint on this world. One of my greatest struggles has been to trust that voice because it often gets drowned out by another voice, ego. And believe me, ego is not our friend because that's the voice of our deepest insecurities. And nothing good ever comes from acting out of one's insecurities. Learning to distinguish between the two voices is challenging because very often the ego tells you what you want to hear, whereas your instinct tells you what you ought to hear. And that's never quite as sexy, is it? But you know what's sexy? Feeling empowered, being in peace, building a life that not only you can count on, but one that also fulfills you. All opportunities that will come your way if you learn to listen to your instincts over your ego. And it's not that you have to completely ignore your ego. I mean, a healthy ego plays an important part in your life, but you can't solely be led by it. Here's another important notion I wish I would have known earlier. When you're manifesting your future goals and aspirations, rather than expecting for them to happen, use hope instead. When I got out of grad school, I had a plan to direct my first film within two years and five to eight years later, have a steady filmmaking career with, who knows, maybe an Oscar in sight. As you'd suspect, life did not go at all according to plan. I did direct my first film within that approximate time frame, but its critical and commercial response were such a catastrophe that my career came to a grinding halt. Or that's what I told myself. The truth is, no external forces could have arrested my career. No bad review or box office disappointment could have permanently stopped me from doing what I love. I did that to myself. And in hindsight, the single greatest paralyzing factor that stopped me was the burden I had put on myself as a result of those expectations. Don't get me wrong. It's important and it's good to have ambitions. But there is something debilitating that takes place when the expectations of those ambitions are not met. We suddenly question ourselves and everything around us, and that leads us to paralysis. It took me a long time to understand that expectations are hope's somewhat toxic cousin. But once I did, everything changed, and my life and my career shifted. I didn't shift the goalposts of my dreams. I only shifted my approach to them by replacing the word expectation with the word hope. And that lifted the performance burden I'd put on myself. Why? What, what's the difference between hope and expectation? It's humility. Expectations are imbibed with that pesky word again, ego, whereas hope isn't. And so when you take the ego out of your dreams, no matter the outcome, you will stay the course and in the process, you establish a healthier relationship with your aspirations. So soon, this hard-earned diploma will be hanging on a wall somewhere in your home or your parents' home because, let's face it, it's also a little bit theirs. <laughs> the question you need to ask yourself is, what do I owe this diploma? What do I owe the time and the treasure I spent getting it? You owe it one thing, finding a career that resonates with your deepest sense of self. You can make a whole lot of money being what I call a mover of merchandise, a person who takes other people's ideas and repackages them for a higher price. But this diploma makes you better than that. This diploma gives you a higher calling. It asks of you to risk to expose yourself to the world by creating something that wasn't here before. That's why you owe this diploma, to leave the world slightly better than when you entered it. After four years at Dornsife, some of you 
will have discovered your professional calling, but the majority, I suspect, won't have and will still be searching. And that's okay. Don't feel bad. Be open about it. Start feeling comfortable with the words, I have no idea. Not knowing is not failing. It's the beginning of clarity. I remember on my first film, this intimidating actor approached me with a bevy of questions about what we were about to shoot, and I freaked out. I didn't have half the answers, and, and just as, as panic set in, my instincts took over, and the truth came tumbling out of my mouth. I told the guy, you know, I have no idea. <laughs> and just like that, by embracing my truth and letting the pressure out of the situation, the ideas started coming. It unlocked my creative mojo. Finding your calling is the most important thing you owe your life. So don't look outwards for the answer. Don't look at what your family wants, what society expects of you. Look within and follow your truth. You can only change the world by doing what you love because that vocation will tap into the very reason you are unique. And that uniqueness is why you've been put on this earth. Moreover, by doing what you love, you will love yourself. And the light you will carry in your eyes reflecting that sense of contentment will shine on others. You will not only elevate yourself, but also those around you. And isn't that what it's all about? Be the tide that elevates the world. Be the flame that makes the hot air balloon rise instead of the sandbag that holds it back. Be the one yes in a barrage of no's. And lastly, be kind. Not all. Be kind not only to others, but also to yourself. Trust your choices and let go. Each choice you make is like planting a seed. Let the seed grow on its own accord. If your choices are true to yourself and born from a good place, then the seed will grow to serve the best of your intentions. Relax. If you're on the right track, life will provide when you least expect it, but most need it. So go forth into the world with eyes open, minds agile, and hearts full. I wish you a life of passion, of audacity, but most of all peace, the kind of peace that visits you when you're living a life of purpose and a life of meaning. Thank you.